to Bonifacio Global City. We've got the Grab Taxi and we're getting dropped off at Bonifacio High Street. Now supposedly the buildings have risen like mushrooms after a rainstorm and traffic jams are as common as karaoke nights in Filipino households. We'll have to see when we get there whether that's true or not. It is known by the initials BGC and has modern architecture with the wide roads, the wide footpaths and green spaces. It contains the uh, Art Centre, Philippine Stock Exchange, the Mine Museum and International School. Well, here we are, Bonifacio High Street. Places certainly has wide footpaths, and High Street doesn't really look like a street at all. We are here just to have a bit of a look around and get a bit of lunch. themselves of eco-friendly so they've got these scooters for hire inspiring sculpture coming up here on the left by the artist Daniel de la Cruz. It's a soldier reading a letter from his family and ignores the war just for a moment. We have the national anthem in the background. The sculpture is called Alab Nang Puso which comes from the national anthem. It's honoring um, troop heroism. The words for love sacrifice freedom peace and hope in different dialects of the philippine language which you can see and at, for that moment he's laying down the gun while he reads the letter these cats sit and smile like kings they know a lot of secret things This is locally known as the Food District. Lower ground floor, 1 Bonifacio Street, High Street Mall. Now if you look over there on the left, that was the Pepper Lunch Express. You could order also rice there. But that's only a bit of a trick really, because it just means rice. These the Bakmi Nonya. Now you can order the Nasa Goringila there, which could just about Take your eyebrows off, that's the crazy fried rice. Now there's Sophie's Kitchen. Now unfortunately they've got nothing there by the look of it because they used to advertise something called a cake better than sex, but I never actually got to try it. So I don't know whether it actually works or not. Hen Lin, 
hanggang ensaymada lang. the Macau Imperial Tea. Now you could slip in there on the secret menu and ask for the pinky promise, but don't tell them I sent you. This is the Zach's Burgers. They have a secret menu too. You can order their Monster Burger, which has four beef patties and four slices of cheese. Because that's for the Matakao people. Well, we have chosen the Seoul Good Korean Grill for our lunch. We've ordered the group meal, which consists of six individual plates. Now, looking at all the meals, you can't, first of all, you can't go wrong with the macaroni salad. I think you can't muck that up for a start. Pancakes were a bit uh, lukewarm and not as crisp as they should be. The japche, which is the noodles over the back there, that's the glass noodles, should have had vegetables in it, and it was just noodles. The beef stew um, is all stew and very little beef by the look of it. And as for the kimchi rice, the standard should have been fried egg on it, and the raw egg should have been asked for. Here are a couple of generators to power those exhibits and the promotions that are being erected in the streets. Now we're standing on 5th and 28th Street. As we look across, we see the Korean K-Pub barbecue, which is that purple entrance over there on the other side. They have the meat all you can eat, time limit eating, so you can eat all you like for a premium price. If you want to, say, eat and go for one hour, it's a lot less. Now we've got lots of street art, good looking earrings. We are on our way back to St. Giles Hotel. This is St. Luke's Medical Center and it's one of the top Philippine hospitals. One of the interesting features of the Pasha Turkish restaurant is that it has a shoe-free zone. So you leave your shoes in a designated area and they provide you with slippers. The idea is to give you a more cozy and comfortable feel and a taste of authentic Turkish experience like you would if you're in a Turkish home or establishment. 
We're turning into McCarty Avenue, so we're almost home. We're going to get a grab taxi and travel to Tutuban for the night market. Meet up with a few relatives and have a bit of a look around. Whenever I see pigs in a truck, it always reminds me of that counting rhyme for toddler's toes. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Now we're travelling on the Ayala Bridge across the Pasig River. And what's interesting over there is that Hospicio de San Jose Island is the island in the middle of the Pasig River. Now that's been open since 1810. It's a homeless shelter for children that have been abandoned. They also take older people. This is the University of the East. Well, we've arrived at the Tutuban Night Market, and Tutuban, the name, supposedly has come from the noise of the trains, Tutut, when it used to be a railway station. Hello. Hello. Hello, Tutuban. We are now down to the serious business of looking for bargains. called into Jollibee for some food and drink to replenish our energy stocks. In the CR I noticed the hand dryer is prohibited from use because of Covid. You'll be pleased to know we did actually purchase a few things. 